Hey guys, it's Kai, and this is an intro to Dodge and Burning. This has been a highly requested video, so I finally decided to make one, just to show you a before and after. This is the before, and this is the after. What Dodge and Burning essentially does for a photo is it creates extra mood, extra contrast, and you can highlight areas that you want the viewer to see. It's pretty much a really great way to finish off an edit. You can see that the image is a lot more dynamic as well as dramatic after you dodge and burn it. So what you want to do first is take your RAW file or JPEG. You want to process it a bit. So for example, you can apply a preset or you can do some manual adjustments in Lightroom or Camera Raw. Make sure you get the color, some mood, as well as bring back any details that's kind of lost in the initial image. For example, this preset, I actually just decreased some highlights to bring back the clouds. And because this is an introduction to Dodge and Burning, we don't really want to edit a really flat image. For example, this one is going to be a lot more difficult and a lot more complex. I suggest you edit the picture a bit before you actually start the dodge and burning process. Alright, let's get started. And for anyone wondering, this preset I used is just one of my presets for my preset pack. It's called Sunset. If you're interested, um, I'll put a link down below in the descriptions. Alright, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is create two folders. You're going to name one dodge and you're going to name the other burn. What dodge means is brighten. The adjustments we're going to be making inside this folder will increase the brightness of the image and the opposite is for burn. It's going to decrease the brightness. Now we're going to add a curve adjustment layer. Go to the bottom. You're going to see this little half circle kind of thing and click curves. Do the same for burn as well. Go to the properties panel. For burn, we're going to lower the curve on the left side. And for dodge, we're going to raise the curve a bit on the right side. You can already see that the image is getting a lot more contrasting. And next is we're going to actually invert the layer mask. So for anyone who's not familiar with layer masks, white means the adjustment layer is visible. Black means the adjustment layer is hidden. We want to have a black layer mask and we're going to add the effects in bit by bit. So just invert it, which for shortcut is command I, or if you're on a PC, it's control I. You want to invert both of them. Now we're going to add the effects bit by bit. And what I found to be very beginner friendly is instead of using the brush tool, we're going to use the gradient tool. So you go to the tools drop down here and look for the square kind of thing. A shortcut is just G. Make sure you have the second one selected, um, the radio gradient tool. And for settings, just click the gradient color here. Make sure your um, just make sure your bar here looks the same as mine. Then just click OK. I'm going to talk about opacity in a bit. So what the gradient tool does, I'm just going to make a black layer, and I'll just show you what the effect is. When you drag, you're going to be dragging a sphere. The more the opacity, let's say 100%, the sphere is going to be very visible. But if you have lower opacity, it's more subtle. For dodging and burning, I like 20%. And why we use this is because when we drag white on the layer mask, it's going to show the effect. Let me just give you an example. I'm going to use 100% because it's the most obvious. Just going to do it here. 
you can see that this bar is actually lining up. And when you drag the gradient tool in the burn curve, you're going to see it's actually making the area a lot darker. We're going to start with dodge because I like to light up the edit first and then I like to darken it. Make sure your colors are white because we're dragging white on a black layer mask to bring in the effect. And make sure the opacity is at 20%. If you want to change it, you can just go in here and type in the number. All right, the first thing I like to do is I like to find the area of focus. So for this image, I think this mountain would be the best choice. And always follow the light. So just you can start dragging. You can see the mountains are actually lighting up a bit. And if one area the effect doesn't feel as obvious, you can drag again, specifically in darker colors, and just follow along. Dodge and burning takes a lot of practice because you need to kind of know where you want to brighten and where you want to darken. Just think of it as applying contrast, but more selective. What I recommend when you're dodging as a beginner is just add the effect to areas where the light is kind of hitting. In terms of mountains, the peaks, you don't really want to dodge the shadows because if you're going against light, then it's not really realistic. And then let's do the clouds. Just get the top because that's where the kind of the light is kind of coming in on. Do somewhere here as well. You don't want to do everywhere. Like here, the clouds are really bright, but if you're dodging here, it's a little bit more overwhelming. It just takes a bit more experience. The more you practice, the better you get and the more you understand where there should be some dodging and where there should be some burning. All right, yeah, I think for the first dodge, I think this is good. Now we're going to move on to burn. One thing I want to say about doing these techniques is that the more time you put into it, the better the results. Usually an edit for me takes maybe an hour to two hours. You can't really rush this because the details are what makes the image beautiful. And for burn, I just want to pretty much burn all the shadows. This will add more three dimension as well as more structure to the overall image. So for example, you just drag where the shadows are and this will definitely create more contrast here. And this will highlight actually just light on the one side and there's shadows on the other side. And you can see that with the gradient tool, it's really easy to apply the effect. I'm going to add a bit more to the sky. I feel like this will bring out the clouds a lot more. Also, when you're burning, you can drag the gradient tool over highlights and areas that are bright. What this does is it kind of lowers the contrast in that area. This will actually make the specific section less eye-catching. So it's a great way to direct the eyes away from that certain region. So for example here, if I burn this section, the eyes won't really look at here as frequently because the contrast here is a lot lower. Normally I like to do the outer areas because a lot of information on the edges aren't as important. And I want to kind of focus the viewer's eyes on here, right? And that's pretty much for burn. Like I said, the amount of time you put into it, the better the outcome. So we can actually do another curve adjustment. 
and we can do a second dodge same thing you create a adjustment layer raise the curve a tiny bit and then you would invert the layer mask now we're going to add a bit more light to the main peak because this is our center of attention as well as here and I kind of want to add a bit more light to the clouds as well also I'm going to do a big one here which kind of just says that there's a certain amount of light coming from here and just highlight the peaks here a bit alright just to show you a quick before and after and you can see that the image is getting a lot more focus you can see that the mountain here is getting some really nice contrast as well as the clouds up here we will do another layer of burn just add more to the clouds as well as more to the mountains give it a really nice kind of Discs. give it a really nice kind of fade as well as a bit more darkening of the edges all right a quick before and after and once you're done dodge and burning just create a new curves You're going to do a really minimal S-curve. This will further enhance what you just did. And it's going to make the image a lot more dramatic. All right, just to show you a quick before and after. The before, and this is the after. You can see the before is a lot more flat. But once you add some dodge and burning, the image becomes a lot more dramatic. And you can see the mountains are a lot more eye-catching. The more time you spend on it, the more precise the edit and the more realistic it looks. I just did a really quick one. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys have a great day. Cheers.